Imagine having a full head of hair one day and the next day being completely bald. Kaggy Simonelli struggled with feelings of loneliness, isolation, and self-pity when she lost her hair from a condition called alopecia. But she pulled herself out of that to become the founder of Bold, an organization that supports women who have lost their hair as a result of chemotherapy, sickness, or personal choice. Kaggy, thanks for being with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Now, Kaggy, you were eight years old when you first found your uh, bald spot. Mm -hmm. How does an eight-year-old handle this? Well, I didn't think, I didn't, really didn't think much of it. I saw it as a spot. I saw it as an inconvenience to a, a hair part. And the spot moved, you know, through, you know, through time. You know, it sort of was seasonal. You know, I have a spot here. I had a spot there. I had very long hair. I had hair down the middle of my back. So then the spot, it would grow back, and then you get a spot somewhere else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when did you find out exactly what it was? When I was about 11, we finally found a doctor that sort of, um, that identified what it was and then identified what the prognosis was which was that it's not life-threatening um, and that it was something of, of an autoimmune allergy. And now when you went through your adolescence, and we were talking about this earlier, I mean, mm -hmm. adolescence is difficult for any, anybody. What kind of support did you have going through, you know, having alopecia and going to high school? And My close friends knew about it, and it, but it was one of those things that they got worse as I got older. So the bald spots became bigger. They were no longer the size of a dime or the size of a quarter. They were, you know, the size of an orange, the size of a grapefruit. So you would... You, you were challenged as to sort of how, you know, you were, so you were able to hide it. You are mm -hmm. hide, but you were as awkward as you are as an adolescent. Mm -hmm. It almost added, intensified mm -hmm. your awkwardness. And you said you went through periods of depression mm -hmm. and isolation and loneliness. Did that change as you got older? Or did it get you know, better? Did it get... You know, as I got older, it got worse. You know, um, as my hair started to fall out, you know, when I was in college, it all fell out. So there I am in college. And, you know, it's like the time of your life, you know, to be, you know, really it's your time to really express yourself and your chance to be yourself. And I was just now at this point, like, hiding in my, I was an artist, so I was hiding in my, in my studio. And, you know, I'd, I would wear scarves and I just, I felt awful. You know, I didn't feel pretty. I felt, you know, I just did what I could to sort of get by. We're talking today about mirror, mirror, which is how we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. At what point did you look at yourself differently? It was actually a particular event that really took me from being, looking at myself differently. I was completely bald when I was 19. And um, I was struggling with who I was. You know, I wore wigs, I wore scarves, and I was very unhappy. And one time I was reading a, an article in the, uh, the New Yorker, and it was a friend of mine who had just written a story. It was published in the New Yorker. I was really excited for him. And he talks about his girlfriends, all of his ex-girlfriends, and how his ex-girlfriends all had the same hairstyle. And they all had bangs and shoulder-length brown hair. Now, that was the style of my wig. And he talks about one girlfriend and, and describes her personality and, and her hairstyle and talks, and then gets to this other character. Clearly, it was me. And I was mortified. Mm. Because in the story, he talks about how he had fallen in love with this, in love with her, this character but had fallen in love with her hair, and the hair was that of another. And I, that mm -hmm. was it. Like, my, my secret was out to the world, and I couldn't see beyond it. And it was devastating to me. But to the, also to the great point of pain, pain also allows you to have the opportunity to look at life differently. That was an amazing turning point. And it took me a, about a year to really, com really look at the article. I only could read um, a paragraph of it. So about a year later, I said, okay, if I can't deal with myself bald, I better get it together. So I looked at it, I read the whole article, and I just said, I need to love myself. I need to decide that I'm a wonderful person, hair or no hair. And I began what I call, you know, the most empowering journey of my life. And through that, you know, I started this great, wonderful um, opportunity. Well, let's talk about Bold, your organization. Yes. It sounds wonderful. Tell us what, how you started it. My experience with being bald and my experience in fashion really gave me a platform to really speak about beauty and to speak about that as an alternative lifestyle for women who are going through a, a temporary hair loss. And, but it also gave women an opportunity just to be themselves. So at the moment when you walk into a room, you can either be a rock star or you can be scary. Hair took on a personality to anybody who has lost it. They talk about their hair like they lost a lover. You know, I was mm -hmm. somebody until I lost mm -hmm. my hair. That was a, 
a great quote that somebody had said to me. I was somebody for 49 years, and now I don't know who I am. And it's amazing that something that grows out of us is something that, ta that really we all identify to the point of who we are. Mm -hmm. When you lose your hair, you are forced to deal and face yourself. And hair then just becomes an accessory. Now, your organization, Bold, you also have a website, and um, people find you there. You had this, this wonderful story, I think, this morning. You got an email. Please tell us about that. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing this morning. I woke up to this wonderful email from this woman who basically said that she has had univers alopecia universalis, which is the hair loss of your entire body. She has had it for two years, and she was at her wits end. And she said, I, you know, at that moment, she was given the, um, the site as a reference place to go. Mm. She said she read every word of it. She watched the, the video, the DVD, and she said she was moved to her core. And that she couldn't believe what an amazing moment it was in turning in her life to be able to see herself as a, the opportunity of being beautiful. And she saw through the quotes and through these other women that it's great to be bald mm. and it's empowering to be bald. And she thanked me profusely. Mm. It was really touching. That, that's it. I mean, that just shows how much you are empowering women out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank you so much, Kagi, for coming in. You really have shown us how true, be true beauty is, is, is here, is inside. Mm. It absolutely and is. And self-acceptance. Thank you so much for coming thank in. You.